Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Kayla. Today I'm going to be covering the topic of working in tech versus working in finance. I've had a bunch of you guys ask me some general questions about the um, work that you would see in the tech industry and what you would find in the finance industry. To start off with, a lot of the people who message me have not written a single line of code in their lives. So if you're even contemplating tech versus finance and you haven't started looking into what coding entails, you haven't started working on writing code on creating projects, and I would tell you to just stop there and start looking up coding resources and starting to see if there are any coding languages that you like and that you want to um, actually make projects and build out a portfolio with. It's the most important thing within whether you're a software engineer, you're a front end web developer, even something like data science in the tech world. You need to build a portfolio so that you can stand out and get hired. That's one of the main positive things about the tech industry is that you are able to show your potential employers how good your skills are by having a portfolio. Whereas in finance, you're really banking on the prestige of the school that you went to, whatever internships that you can get yourself into, building out a resume with high level achievements and sales in uh, once again, past internships that you've done and various companies that you work for as you build your career. In the tech world, in tech jobs, you are very much relying on your actual skill. And in finance, you're obviously going to have, need to have Excel skills, Microsoft Office Suite skills, um, but a large part of you advancing each level in the hierarchy uh, in finance companies, especially high finance, is soft skills. You're going to have to, the first, you know, the first five, six years when you're an analyst and then go up to associate, you are doing the grunt work and then after you, that first five, six years, if you do end up getting promoted, you end up being in more of a client facing sales role. So those soft skills really um, make or break your advancement in finance careers. In tech, soft skills are really going to help you continue to climb up the corporate ladder from going from a software engineer, a coder, a uh, regular data scientist and become a manager of a group of coders, a manager of a team of data scientists, becoming a VP, a CTO, etc. You the C the soft skills are going to continue to build your career. If you're somebody who's not willing to build your soft skills, to build your sales skills, then you're going to have a hard time advancing in any kind of opportunity out there tech or finance wise. You may want to pursue a tech opportunity if you are somebody who cannot handle 80, 100 hour weeks. When trying to decide between tech and finance, you need to ask yourself what kind of environment you would prefer to be, what kind of company you would prefer to work for, um, what kind of culture do you prefer? Do you like the 40 hour work weeks typically and like pool tables and arcade games kind of culture? Or are you okay with working 100 hours a week? You know, are you gonna be the kind of person who loves to go to hackathons and is able to um, like nerd out in either of those industries? Are you gonna be able to nerd out about all the upcoming uh, tech advancements, coding advancements, or are you, you know, a total finance nerd and get excited about looking over some spreadsheets. A lot of you are interested in FANG, which is an abbreviation for Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google because they pay the highest salaries for the tech industry. And for beginning software engineers, they pay extremely high base salaries plus um, stock options and bonuses. So software engineers in that first like five years of their career working for any of the FANG companies, they're making just as much as finance, high finance analysts, associates. A lot of you are concerned about the trajectory of your careers and how much you can make in 
one or the other of these jobs and in these industries. Um, yes, you can make more at Fang, any Fang company, um, like those first like three years that you start off as a software engineer for any of those companies. But the long-term trajectory in a finance career, if you're able to be one of those pe people who are in the top 10% of um, finance majors who get one of the top jobs, and then when you're actually in your job and you are one of the top 10% people who get you know, all the way to the top, who get to be MD, who get to continue further than that, then yes, you're gonna be making more than like 90% of people in the tech world because you are working on deals that are hundreds of millions of dollars every single year. So you have to think, are you gonna be literally 1% of all finance majors and making it? all the way to the top versus living a much more stable life within tech unless you're an absolute coding superstar or have an amazing idea that takes off and you're either like a CTO or you start off your own company that makes a ton of money, is valued at a ton of money. Which one is more likely to happen for you? Which one of the skills are you better at and can make happen and make your goals happen? Do you wanna work in Seattle and San Francisco or do you wanna work in New York City? Are you okay being a software engineer in a finance company? Or are you okay being a financial professional working in a tech company? You have to ask yourself what position does each company value the most? Not every tech company is going to value the financial people who work in it and not every finance company is going to value the tech people who work for them. At the end of the day, you need to decide which skills you want to hone and develop and be obsessed about and you really you know if you have passion for both you can mix both of them because fintech is not going anywhere fintech is continue continuing to build and get bigger and bigger and more relevant in our everyday lives if you want an example of fintech it would be like voice command banking solutions there's a company near me that does that there's just so many things advancing in the tech world now, if you ask me what industry I think is more stable over, you know, the years to come, where are there more opportunities for, you know, the average person to go and get and have a great life, I would definitely tell you that tech is definitely where it's at. You know, and I would suggest tech for more people than I would finance because finance is just such an industry driven on prestige and the finance companies want you to have the Ivy League degree and pedigree. They want you to have the highest GPA possible. They want you to have relevant internships. Whereas tech companies for a lot of these roles and for a lot of these companies, they're willing for you to come in with no degree as long as your skills are up to par and you can actually code and make things happen. That just does not happen in the finance world. You could avoid having tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands uh, of dollars worth of debt by going into tech instead of finance if you're somebody who's not able to get a full ride scholarship to a Ivy League school. You could skip years of your life not going to college as long as you are able to build up coding skills. And companies like Amazon, Apple, Google, they're um, definitely more in the mindset that employees can be trained and these finance companies are just not like that. They want you to have a pedigree. They want you to be proven by getting into a highly ranked school and getting that GPA, earning that high GPA. The tech world is definitely better for somebody who doesn't want to spend four years in college. Um, it's good for the people who are like woke and understand that colleges are just a means to produce workers who are going to follow orders, which is what the finance industry wants. So if you're somebody who's undecided on which way to go, I would tell you to, you know, try and start coding, see if that's right for you, see if you can be passionate about it. If you're not, then, and if you're more passionate about finance, then 
you know, do what you need to do to get where you want to be in finance if that's truly where you want. I have other videos about that, so go check out those videos. If you're somebody who is generally interested in finance but does not want to be an analyst, does not want to be an associate, doesn't want to work up that ladder, and you do have coding skills, you do have math skills, you can build alg algorithms, there are hedge funds, there are investment banks, there's other finance companies who want to hire you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video about me talking about tech versus finance. And if you liked it, be sure to give it a like. Share it with anybody who might need to hear this information. If you have a comment or question, be sure to leave it down below. And if you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I'll see you around with another one of my videos. Bye!